All right, guys. We got the 22 GN. This is my personal gooseneck. It's a 30 foot overall, 25 plus five of dovetail. Does not have the mega ramps. It actually has just the partial ramps, as you can see. I just put them back on because when we go with the dual vehicles, I have to pull the ramps off and I put them in backwards, but it still works. So what we're doing today is I have built this here. It's a chain storage. So chains go in there. Lid comes down. You can lock it here. Lock it there. This is quarter inch plate. Um, and this here is a, a four inch channel at quarter wall. So it's very, very sturdy. We're going to weld that onto it. The other thing is, is I've been hearing some noises and we're prepping for the Moab trip. I got some noise coming out of here. So I've never checked the brakes. I've done bearings. Well, I've checked bearings and yada yada. I uh, just put new tires on it, all eight of them. Um, and I'm gonna rip these off and we're gonna start checking into it. Got a new toy. So I had the 2135 Ti Max. Where you at? Where you at? There you are. So this has been old trusty for a long time. And when I was just working on that Yukon the other day, it did not want to get the wheel bearing bolts out. So it was time to step up. According to the torque test channel, this little giddy right here. She's the, what do we got here? MT2779. This is supposed to be the cat's meow. Let's, uh, let's see what she does. Because these lug nuts, uh, I think they're only 140 foot-pounds. I don't know what they are, but um, yeah, we're going to tear into this. And then we're going to go over everything else on it. We're going to check all the lights. I know they work, but I'm just going to double check all the wiring and everything. This license plate needs some addressing. I'm going to bring that light up, bring the plate up. That way I stop damaging it. And we're gonna install the chain guide up there. This is a gazebo that I just demoed the other day. I'll put a, I'll put a couple pictures in there. I didn't film any of it. Um, my buddy came with me, helped me out. It was just a real quick little side job. Took the bobcat, cut the top of it off, threw it on the ground, cut the post, grabbed the deck, pulled it away from the existing deck, and cut it, and there it is. Um, so yeah, I just got to get rid of that. But let's uh, let's get going on this thing. job for our favorite Mac tools pick. Once again, Mac tools to the rescue. Take a minute here to show you guys what you look for in bearings. Since I gotta check them all anyways, you're looking for any kind of discoloration on these. These are pretty uniform all the way across. There's no pitting in them. There's no worn out chrome spots. I don't think. Ah, this one's starting to pit. This one's starting to. There's a couple little white spots in it. I think, uh, well, I'm here. 
Well, it's not the worst, but I'm anal retentive, so today it gets them. And it says China on it. I want to see Timken. Yeah, those aren't going back in. Is your problem okay so the pin's gone so this is supposed to ride here and there's a pin that goes through it and it's gone and part of it's up here all right so I don't know what that is These axle seals have been leaking for a pretty good amount of time. You can see all the all the oil and everything inside of it here. These are pretty worked. Realistically, there's no grooving in them. So realistically the drums are okay. Just needs everything inside and then Whatever we got going on in here, like I said, this little pin right here fell out. We gotta get the trailer moved out and then get all these drums off so that I can get them down there and get them resurfaced. We'll figure out where to park the trailer for right now. And uh, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Alright, so our next step is to put all that in that. Let's get it cut up and going. Alright guys, so we got all the stuff off the trailer. I vacuumed it up real quick. Make sure there's nothing that can catch on fire. Here's what I couldn't cut up and put into the bins at the moment. And then I made a grading box for the back of a lawnmower, but I'll show you that later. So now we're gonna get this thing installed on the trailer. I started to grind it, I'm keep on grinding and uh, get it welded in. So that's that. You got the bead laid in there. Get a bead across over here. Up in the top here is a little bit difficult. So we'll weld it up in there. We got a little bit going on up top here. Not much though. And yeah, that's uh that's it. So I'm gonna get some touch-up paint on it. Load it with chains. Okay, as you can see, it locks them in there pretty good. Can't get them out. So now we gotta build a box in here that the spare chain will sit stop it from coiling up on the deck like this. Let's see what we can come up with. All 
All right, so what we've come up with, I had this piece laying around. I'm gonna weld this in right here, in the front. I'm gonna put some expanded metal at the bottom of it. And then we're gonna have a little cage. The chains will just sit in there and they'll be, they'll be perfectly fine. They won't jump out or anything. It doesn't bounce that much. Um, so yeah, I'll have a nice little pouch right here. All the chains will be sitting in it. Quick, easy, and done. All right, there we go. We got a couple of squares. Let me get this tapped in. Now that that's tacked in, here's what we got. I got a C-clamp holding a speed square. So it's nice and level across. Set it ground down, we're gonna just blast this whole seam. Same thing over here, just blast the seam. Similar setup, speed square clamped in. That was just to hold this piece of metal while I get it tacked. Let's get that burned in all the way. Alright, so we got those burned in. That's pretty decent, it ain't going anywhere. This guy over here, good. Now we're gonna measure out our expanded metal. Alright guys, so it's essentially what we're looking like right now. I'm going to weld it smack in the middle of both of these, underneath obviously. So that'll be underneath, we'll have a nice little tray and we'll be styling. So I'm going to get the other piece of expanded metal cut, get this tacked in there and I'll show you what she looks like. Alright guys, so I've been trying out this new rigid disc that's a grind slash cut wheel. It is slower, it builds up more heat, but it cuts right through mill scale. Like that's easy, and then the paint, right through it. It doesn't gum up or anything. So for that, I like it. All right guys, here's the finished product. I welded it all the way across. To get maximum strength in the middle, I overlapped them and kind of seamed them. Um, not really the prettiest thing in the world, but it is very strong. So here's what we got for a box inside. Again, up top, it looks a lot cleaner. 
welded the edges and uh, plenty plenty strong so I'm gonna slap a little bit of the old lipstick on her and then uh, call it good all right guys let's tackle this license plate of course let's try that again That's weird. Anyways. Oof. That's that's not good. Here. Oh, I also just realized that my light's floating in water. Huh. I don't know if you can see that. So Amazon, here we go. All right, so explanation here. I bought this car, um, got a pretty decent deal on it, had a couple things wrong with it. I got to diagnose the airbag light, and then the suspension's fucked and needs brakes all the way around. So I'm gonna take care of that, 
and then uh, send it on its way. Um, kind of bought it for a friend, so if they want it, great. If they don't, give it to someone else. But we are going to disable this trailer. I got to get the drums off, get them out by tomorrow. That way they can be resurfaced. The new brakes will be here on Tuesday. So we got a little bit to do here. Um, I'm going to jack it back up, get the jack stands under it, get the wheels off, and strip the rest down like we did that first one. Thing. I gotta correct myself guys, like I said I haven't messed with this style of an axle yet. I thought that there was a pin that went in here, but it's just a clip. So that clip that I found on the other side is that clip. So the fact that these have I don't know, close to 10 millimeters of brakes left. I'm not going to be replacing these. Um, I'm going to, which I'm fucking stoked about. I am doing bearings. I am doing seals. Uh, I am doing these two bolts right here. They're supposed to have zerts in them. And the zerts are broken inside of them. I'm not drilling them out. I'm going to take it apart. I'm going to inspect them. I'm going to replace that. Um, as long as this axle over here is okay, I'm only going to do one brake, which is the one up there saturated in oil, and then I'm going to put these clips in, and I'm going to have the drums resurfaced. Um, that should be, uh, it should be all I need to do. So I'll show you guys on one of these how you're going to do it. There's races inside here. So basically what we're going to do, you can see one of the races right there. I found it out. Now we gotta clean all this up. I'm just gonna use the punch, scrape all this dirt out of here. I'm gonna continue to clean this up and I'll come back when it's all pretty. All right guys, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use our race installer here. Find the right one. <laughs> the one I don't have. Perfect. So I got the one for the front. Nope. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do it differently. So we're going to line up the race inside. I'm going to start it.
you'll hear when it sits. That's in. Okay, so this is a brass punch. You can see how much damage is done to that. Get in there and get all the brass out. Again, lint. Don't use paper towels. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so then we're gonna take a little of the gear oil. I typically will run 80, 90 in these. So I'm gonna set it into it, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit in the bearings, just a little bit. Then you can see it's already coming out through the wheels. I'm just trying to start or trying to prevent a dry, dry spin. Here we go. Now comes time for our oil seal. You'll see this one here says oil side. The old seal said air side. So it's going to go in with this facing down towards the oil, which is when I looked at it originally, I wanted to put it in this end first, but uh, it's not how it goes. Here's a, uh, a wrist pin that came out of a old international um, moving truck, actually, G Grant Movers, and. Uh, I use this thing to bash on everything, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna tappy tappy all the way around. Tappy tappy. Nice and even. And then finish him. Seals in. All right, so the front, I do have, I do have the correct piece for. So this here is basically, this is aluminum, so no chance of it hurting it. Just put it there. Send it home. Done. And this one here, we do not uh, do not put the bearing in, do not lube it yet, because when we set it into the vehicle or uh, under the trailer, that's when we're going to do that. All right, guys. So I already sprayed everything down with brake cleaner. We're going to just use a little uh, emery cloth here, or not emery cloth, uh, Scotch Brite. Just going to clean up the surface that the seal is going to ride on. All right, that's done. Oh, bye. <clears throat> then 
and I just want to clean that real good and just feel it for imperfections. What are you guys watching? Perverts. Anyways, so that's all nice and clean. I got a little mark right here on the lip. The little micro lip right there. Okay, get the shaft all clean. Now comes the tricky part. Then we're gonna check this. Clip is good in there. All right, so this is kind of like a little ballet. So we have to get this seal on there, get it all lined up, but at the same time, it has to go over this lip here, all while holding, I don't know, 75 pounds or so, over my lifting capacity. So, here we go. Damn, the brakes are too tight. Gonna just loosen up the brakes a little bit. Give me a little more wiggle room here. There we go. Okay. So this outer bearing, I'm gonna go in dry. If it's got, uh, if it's got grease on it. It ain't a big deal, but I'm going on dry because I don't want it leaking out at me right now. And when I fill it, that's the first thing to get oil. Okay, first nut's gonna go on. So, Harbor Freight has got a time and a place. Today was the time, Harbor Freight was the place. So we got the Mad Dog wheel hook set. Oops, and we opened it up upside down. Let's set the torque wrench to 100 foot pounds. Keep turning it. All right, after it's torqued to 100, and we've spun it a couple billion times, we're gonna loosen it. Without rotating it, we're gonna go finger tight and then back it off just a little bit. They say a quarter-ish. Personally, don't like to uh, don't like to have them too too loose. That's on. 
Now I left the tabs bent. I would normally just adjust the back in order to fit what I needed to do. Um, meaning if the nut was just a little off, I'd loosen it or just snug it a tiny bit. Depends on which way felt better for me. Now this is gonna go on. And this little sucker is supposed to be quite a bit tighter. And the whole time I'm watching that, star ring there make sure that it doesn't spin and I'm gonna kick this thing up to a hundred and it's between a hundred and 175 foot-pounds I'm just gonna go to 125 and we rebend some ears just make sure Spins nice. If we get the hammer. Now I will fold these down on the tightening side typically. Okay. All better. Now clean out this cap. which I replaced these caps last year. So the caps are in great condition, the seals are in good condition. And we're going to use the German torque specs on this one. Just going to hold our hand up to the beginning here. Just barely seat it. Here we go. This one is done. Now we're going to go on the back, we're going to adjust the star wheel till it's touching and then back it off just a hair and then the side's done besides this. Actually let me get some oil going in it first. You want it in this line. Once you start spinning it, it'll take some in. It'll give you some back. Doing this when it's cold really sucks because the gear oil doesn't move. So I've actually taken these before and put them in hot water and got them to start moving. Alright, now I'm going to adjust it up and I'm going to do the same for all the others until I get to the backing plate. Alright guys, tech tip. Before you put in that seal, make sure your bearing's in it. Fuck! Yep. Yeah. There goes the $30 seal. Cool. Alright. I'll destroy that seal and put the bearing in and put another seal on it. Ah. Make sure that's in there. Because otherwise... Otherwise, your new seal Badly damaged. Oh, you can't even see that, can you? Yeah, you can. There it is. That's trashed, and then that's trashed. So, gonna have to uh, get another one of those. Till then, let's use this one. All right, guys. 
That bolt there is a pivot bolt. That one there is also a pivot for the rear leaf spring. Those are supposed to have a zerk fitting like that. So, here's the replacements. It's got a zerk in it. There's a hole in the center that allows for the grease to go through. Never done these before, but they seem pretty straightforward. I have a jack back there holding up the back of the trailer. And then we have jack stands underneath the axles. I'm going to lower this guy here, undo him, start tapping him out and see what that feels like. And then I'll dump this axle back here. I might have to put a jack under this and I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it. All right, guys, so here's the old bolt for the center. The new one, I already got the new one installed and greased in there. The front one, these are 7 8 and what I have is not 7 8 they're actually 5 8 which is surprising. But here's the new one, no greased. Here's the old one, yeah, but it's damaged. I was thinking originally. So the inside hole was just filled with dirt. I was thinking I might be able to just clean it out, so I pulled it out to clean it. And uh, it's worn in heavy. You can see this one's kind of damaged too. That's not great. So, yeah. Another run to the store, get the right bolts. All right, guys. Well, this video and time kind of got away from me. Uh, I thought I shot some footage that I didn't shoot, so, yeah. It, where I left off is I'm currently editing the video and realized some blank spots in here. This chain rack is all done. I am going to put a bar in here, probably about up here, that the chains go in and they can't, like, work their way out as I'm going down the road. Everything else with that works killer. We have the block installed in there. I reorganized my toolbox, got some fluids and other shit in there. Um, back here, got the rims all nice and cleaned up. We have our bolts installed. So we'll get that one in there now. That guy's in there. The one in front is greased. He's greased. So, all those pins have been replaced. Brakes are all done. Gear oil is at the proper level on all of them. Nice, nice. So, yeah, the trailer is good to go. I'll show you this side here. Much of the same. New pin, new pin right there. New pin in the front, tires were already replaced. Level, the level, and yeah, this pretty much concludes everything on the gooseneck that I need to do minus that bar. I'll get done, I don't know, I'll probably wait till last minute. We're leaving in two weeks, so I'll wait till the last minute and take care of that. Not worried about the deck. There are some boards. Uh, it's a two by four. That's sorry, a two by six. That's a two by six. It's not the actual decking that it should be, but I'm not gonna replank this deck until it's trashed. But yeah, so it took me a week and a half to finish this trailer, which is entirely too long. But all I do is work on it after work or on the weekends, and then. Part availability, as you saw, I destroyed four seals on this thing at uh, 30 to $40 each. I ended up having to basically trash them all because the other side over there, I didn't like where I placed the seal. And then this side here, when I was putting it together, I uh, forgot the bearing on one of them. And I don't remember what happened to that one, but something happened to it. So, yeah. Basically, ended up doing those a couple times, and figured I'd just show you guys where we're at. I also, I have video of me doing this, building this rack, kinda. I started doing it and then realized it was 
actually uh, a lot more in <laughs> a lot trickier than I had thought it would be to cut the holes I went through several um, hole saws and then I went on Amazon and I tried all sorts of different uh, hole saws that they had on there and angular cutters and ended up just using my mag drill which the mag drill has a safety on it where if it's not sitting completely proper on the piece it's off a little bit it doesn't have a strong enough signal being fed back like it's not drawing enough current then it shuts the magnet off well we had to get in there and twist a couple wires together and now it'll turn the magnet on and start the drill no matter what so had to modify the mag drill and then do all these little chinguses here uh, I'll find the footage of that and I'll oh, throw it in there but uh yeah hope uh hope you guys enjoyed this a little bit if nothing else sheer boring entertainment for you uh, and coming up here in two weeks we'll be doing the the road trip i'll show you guys how i load things on this thing and we'll head off to moab and go see what we can break here so thanks for watching again guys um subscribe like hit the little little thumb butt plug button there and uh hope to catch you on the next one thanks